go right ahead. All right, so welcome everyone. I am Tira Philpis daughter. I live here in the West Kingdom in the Principality of Sanagua, and I reside in the Shire of Thistletor, which is the uh, Yuba, uh, sorry, Sutter County uh, in the Northern part of California. So today we are going to learn how to make a hood. Um, I'll have to apologize. I don't uh, really speak whatever language <laughs> from Scandinavia it was found in. So I think they're called a Skoldham hood. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, let me, I will share my screen here. Oh, actually first, so I'll just show. So here's, they're the ones that, um, they have that front triangle that we see so many so many people wearing. So we're gonna learn how to make one of those. So I did make a presentation to show everybody um, and show steps so that later on you can um, create one on your own. And there is a link and then also a QR code that I put in the comments. And also they will be on the front page of my presentation. So let me share that. All right, so I can't see the um, the Zoom meeting and comments while I'm running through this presentation. So if Sarah can chime in, if somebody has questions, I'm happy to stop during my presentation and answer questions. Um, after I am done with the presentation, I am going to show some of the steps, um, pinning and sewing on an actual piece so that you can see some of the things in person um, to compare so that the notes make sense later. So please feel free to chime in anytime, guys. Or take yourself off mute and ask a question, it's fine too. So here's a little bit of background about the hood. Um, it was found on a fully dressed person that was found in a bog. So it's unusual for us to find full garments, but this, this person had been preserved in a bog. So they have the full outfit that they were wearing. Um, they were dated to 1000 to 1200, the year 1000 to 1200. It was likely a Norse woman based on um, the genome sequencing that they did. They can't be 100% sure, but they're pretty sure it was female. The original piece was out of wool 2212. There is a set of ties that you can see that were on the original hood. We're not gonna put those on ours. Most people don't put those on there. I've seen various uh, people recreating this and trying to have a guess as to whether it was tied behind the head or in front of the head. Um, and people, we're just not really 100% sure how those ties were used. And they tend to work fine without, so I don't, I don't put them on there. The original is likely made with two rectangles and two squares set in as gores, and that's the way that we're going to make it today. I've seen other interpretations of how this might have been made, but um, in my opinion, this is probably the easiest way to put this together. So here are some pattern options. Um, you'll notice for the most part, the rectangular pieces are fairly similar in size. And then the squares can be sized to make the hoods um, fit a little bit differently and maybe be a little longer or a little shorter. The first one up here, um, and I use a half inch seam allowance. The first one up here is the size that I like for my hoods. So I'm going to stop. Oops. Um, stop sharing for a second. And I'll show you how that that size hood fits. So this is how that my preferred size fits. So this comes on me about mid stomach. So my belly button's here, chest is here. Um, that's how that one fits me. Fits nice and comfortably over the shoulders. It's got a good size hood on it. A little bit of bagginess. Um, the shorter size that I have listed up there, the the point on the bottom would come to about here. And the larger size I have would probably come up most of the way to my belly button and be just a little bit broader over the shoulders. So that's kind of how those sizes would fit. Let me go back to share. Is this sharing the video or the presentation? Was it working correctly? It was working correctly, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> I don't use Zoom a lot. Okay. Yeah, there you um, go. Okay, perfect. And so then the, here is the one for the larger size hood. You can see the squares are quite a bit larger. Um, you can also make one based on your own head and shoulder measurements and play with the gore size to give you the look and feel you like. For the most part, um, 
If you're gonna make smaller gore squares, you need to make the main hood rectangle a little bit wider so that it fits over your shoulders. And you can make that dimension a little bit smaller without getting too small to actually cover the back of your head to your face. So you can play around with things a little bit, but I find these three sizes kind of fit people's needs from wanting something a little smaller to something a little bit bigger. For the amount of your, uh, fabric you'll need, you'll need approximately one and a half yards if the hood length is on warp. So that is from cut edge to cut edge is the warp, from selvage to selvage is the weft. So if you want the main hood running on the warp, um, the long way, then you're gonna need about a yard and a half to make that length. And if you're gonna have it go the length of the weft, you're gonna only need about um, three quarters of a yard. And this may vary a little bit if you have um, a patterned fabric or a directional fabric. And you will not use the, that whole amount of fabric, but to get that rectangular piece, um, you'll need that much unless you wanna start piecing it together. So you don't have to create this hood with a fold. I tend to do that just so that I don't have a top seam, but you can also create it with a top seam if that fits better. Um, and I have an example of that today that I, um, I had a piece of fabric that wasn't big enough to do a single piece for the actual hood part. So some tools that you'll need, you'll need fabric of some kind. I recommend th something that's not stretchy. Um, just because of um, how it'll wear and then how I, I'm not very good with stretchy fabric. So I wouldn't be able to give any advice on how to put that together. And I don't recommend uh, synthetic fabrics. Um, they tend to be very hot when it's warm out and they tend to be not very insulating or providing a lot of warmth if it's cold. Um, so in general, I usually use either linen or wool, but you could also use um, cotton or if you really wanted to go fancy, you could use silk uh, or something else with a natural fiber. You're going to need scissors, rotary cutter and mat, ruler, some kind of marking chalk pen or pencil. I don't recommend using something permanent just in case um, you don't want it showing through and marking your fabric. Pins, a thread and needle, sewing machine unless you want to sew it all by hand, and an iron to press seams open and to press your fabric. <laughs> So construction steps. So first we wanna prepare the fabric. So you wanna wash, dry and iron your fabric. If you don't plan to wash it later, you just need to iron. But if you plan on ever washing this, you really should wash your fabric first because you never know how it's going to shrink. Um, lay out your fabric and cut it out, uh, cut out the main hood piece or two pieces if it needs to be done in pieces and two square gores. And then serge your edges if you wanna um, have them be serged. Step one, if needed, you would sew the top edge of the hood rectangles together and then press that seam open. Step two, you're gonna take one of your gores and mark your seam allowance from the edges on one corner. Um, and you wanna do both, both sides of that corner so that you make a little box in the corner. Step three, you're going to line up the gore with the uh, bottom corner of one side of the hood and then sew up the side and stop or start if you're going that direction um, at that mark, which would be your, your seam allowance from the edge. And the reason we do that is so that um, your pieces will lay in there nice and flat and you won't get um, weird buckling or um, folding from where the seam comes together at the top of that gore. Um, and also just to remember that um, when you sew, you always sew with right sides of the fabrics touching each other so that then when you press your seam open and you flip it open, you've got your right sides on the outside of whatever you're making. So step four, we sew the adjacent edge of the gore. So that was, so we sewed this edge before, and then we're gonna sew this adjacent edge to the other side of that same side of the hood. And sew, and then you're gonna stop again at that corner mark with your seam allowance. Step five, you're gonna do the same steps two through four, mark your gore, sew it in on one side, sew it in on the other side, and then you're gonna have a hood that's completely, it's got like an open tube in the top part with two gores inset at the bottom. The next step, you're gonna sew the back of the hood. So you're just gonna choose whichever side you want, and then you're gonna sew starting at the top of the gore, and then all the way to the top of the hood. And I usually sew in that direction so that if the fabric is moving or shifting at all, um, all of that extra 
uh, movement goes all the way to the top and you get a nice clean seam. If you go the other way, you might have a pucker or a fold at the corner of the gore. So that's just a tip to make it maybe um, look a little bit cleaner, but it doesn't actually matter which direction you sew it. And then you wanna press, always press your seams open. It's easiest to do it as you go along. Um, I always like to double check after I sew that seam that there's not a hole or a gap here at the back. Um, if you didn't quite line up your needle in the right spot, if there is, you can go back inside and then just do a couple stitches over the top of where that hole is just to make it a little bit stronger. And then step seven is to finish any edges and face opening and then doing any seam finishing that you'd like to do. And then you're done. So some options for seam treatments. Um, I tend to do a running stitch because it's very simple, fast to do. You could do a herringbone stitch. You could do blanket stitching. You can really do anything that you like the look of. Um, the period piece had, um, had blanket stitch around the face. And then I think on the other seams, it just had whip stitches to hold it down. So you can decide how much you wanna decorate these. I've also seen people do stamping on the hoods um, to make them a little bit more decorated. So you can kind of choose how fancy or how fun you want to make it. And just a few tips for success. You want to pre-wash your fabric if you plan to wash it in the future, like I mentioned earlier. Always iron your fabric prior to laying it out and cutting it just to ensure that your pieces are coming out um, square and then also the size that you really, are, you really want. You want to remove your salvages from your fabric before you cut your pieces. Um, salvages, they don't they don't stretch and move the same. Um, they hold the fabric in place. And so if you use a selvage on one side, you might end up with a finished piece that, especially as you wear it, it may stretch and warp kind of differently because that selvage is holding the fabric um, fibers just a little bit differently than the other parts. So I always recommend removing those. It's very tempting to use it as a finished edge, but you don't really want to do that because it can really affect the final piece that you end up with. If you are going to do seam finishing or treatments, use the compatible thread or yarn. For example, don't use wool thread or yarn on a linen that will be washed. Done that in the past. You end up with a hood that's got puckering and folding from the wool shrinking in the wash. And then you end up ripping it all out and spending a lot of time restitching it, which I have done. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, I prefer to cut my hood out um, as one, one piece along the warp if possible. Your warp threads of your fabric usually are a little bit stronger than the weft threads. Um, in general, it doesn't really matter, but that's just a preference that I have. And then here is some contact information for me. Um, there is my email, there's my Facebook link, I have an Instagram, and then you can also message me on Discord, but I don't check it every day and it's not set up to send me notifications. So if you send me a message there, it may be a while till I am a week or two before I see it. All right. So that's our presentation. And um, I gave you guys that link so that you can download that for later. And I'm gonna start showing you some of the sewing techniques now. How do I get it to show me? Okay, I'm gonna move this. Um, before I start, is there any questions so far? All right, so close your eyes. I don't wanna make you dizzy. <laughs> Aim this down here. Okay. Okay. All right. So here is one I kind of started because there's not really, I didn't want to take the time to do a whole one because it would take a few hours total, but um, I did some of this in here. Oh, which way? There we go. So you can see this one was done in two pieces because of the amount of fabric that I had wasn't enough to do a single piece. So you can see I sewed the top edge. So that's the top edge of the hood there. So I've done a gore on one side, and then I'm going to do the gore on the other side. So this isn't lining up as good as I want. Oh, which way? Oh, here we go. It's backwards. <laughs> so I've sewed, I've lined up the gore on, so here's the long edge. This is the long edge of the hood. Here's the short edge of the hood here. And this is the short edge of the hood here. Oh, can't see it. There you go. Um, so it's lined up on the corner, and then I sewed from the bottom corner up to where, you can't really see my mark on there, but I sewed to where that little mark is. So there's my seam allowance there. So now I'm gonna line up the other edge. So you wanna follow the hood all the way to the same side. So I've got the same side here. You can't really, it's hard to see. 
So you've got the same side of the hood. So here's the long edge here. Here's the short edge here on this side. So this is the, that's the seam I did before. So I'm gonna line it up this way. So we've got that top corner is gonna be the top corner on this other side. And we're just gonna line it up and pin it. So when you're doing the top of that gore, you want to make sure that you pulled the other side of the hood out of the way so that you don't accidentally sew it down into the seam. And you want to make sure there's not any fabric from this side that's going to be down underneath the top edge of that, the top corner of that gore. Okay, so I've got it all pinned. So you can see there it's pinned. Oop, which direction? There we go. It's all pinned across there. So now I'm going to sew that seam. Okay, so now we have both corners of that gore, gore sewed, sewed down, and then we've got a hole that goes all the way through <laughs> with two gores. I'm gonna move this up. So we've got the two gores inset and two open sides here. So you're just gonna pick one, and then you're gonna lay it flat. And you're just going to pin all the way from this way. So here's where my gore is inset. You can see where the, the stitching ends right there. So that's where I'm going to start sewing. And then sew all the way to the top. So I'm going to pin this real fast. Does anybody have any questions while I do this? I like to think that these are pretty easy, but there's no dumb questions. So if you have any questions about any of it, I'd love to hear it. Okay, I have a question from earlier that yes. I was too ashamed to ask. Oh, no, never. Me? Right? Can you tell me what the difference is between warp and weft in terms of salvage and which direction things run? Yes. So the warp runs from cut edge to cut edge, and this, the weft runs from salvage to salvage. So when you're laying your pattern out, you lay it out how relative to cut edges and salvages? I like to do my hoods with the, the warp running this way. So this is your top cut edge. This is your bottom cut edge. This would be a selvage. I can't really see, but this would be a selvage on the side and this side. This hood got cut out the other direction because I didn't have enough fabric to do it that way. And that is fine. Um, I think it'll wear the same. Um, I've just, so I don't know a lot about fabric, but I've been told by other people who are fabric aficionados that the warp is usually stronger threads than the weft. And so I okay. do that top to bottom so that it's got that strength through the top of the hood. That makes sense, thank you. Yeah. And if you have a directional fabric, you're gonna have to decide which direction you want it to, to go on the hood. 
And then your, your gores, it doesn't matter which direction they go because they are squares and they get inset at a diagonal anyway. So they're going to have stretch across um, the diagonal, the, um, oh, I'm blanking on what that's called. <laughs> the bias, they're going to have stretch bias. across the bias there. Yes. Yes. Um, and, oh, and you'll, you saw that I used um, contrasting colors. I have a hood made out of wool that's all a single color. Um, you can kind of, that's another way that you can kind of um, change these up, make them a little bit more decorative um, is by using different color or same color if that's what you want to. So now I'm gonna, I've got this all pinned. So this is gonna be the back of the hood. So our gore's inset here. So I'm gonna start there and then sew to the top. So now we have the top of the hood sewn there. So I'm going to move this up so you guys can see me. So we're basically done other than seam finishing and finishing around the face and everything. So let me show you. Oh yeah, my last step there. So I always recommend checking. Oh, where's my camera? There it is. I always recommend checking right here at the top of the score. Make sure there's not a hole there um, so that you don't have like a weak, a structurally weak spot on there. So mine looks good. There's no hole. And we've got a hood. And I do recommend uh, um, ironing seams, <laughs> presser seams as you go. It's a little bit easier than doing it at the end. Um, but for brevity's sake, I didn't want to iron while I was on camera here. So, so now we have a hood. So not, I can do one in probably from cutting out. So assuming your fabric is clean and ironed, um, cutting out to getting this, to this point where this one is without the, the finishing, you can probably do it in maybe an hour, an hour and a half. And then finishing work just takes as long as how much um, hand stitching you feel like doing. Um, Cause you could just finish everything on uh, with a sewing machine if that's your preference. So uh, that's all I had. So does anybody have any questions? Uh, I noticed that you didn't put any stiffening around the edge of the hood. Um, I don't know mm -hmm. anything about the Schuldenham ones, but all of the other hoods that I've seen, especially 13th century, 14th century, have um, tablet weaving around the edges, or they have whatever that technique is, where it's a, a zigzag S woven into the wool to make it extra stiff. You don't, did the, the Schulden, I can't pronounce that word, Schuldenham. It's Goldham. Yeah, it's Goldham. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Schulden. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't speak any of the languages from up there. So I, I'm just I looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it didn't have any additional stiffener. It was just out there flapping in the breeze. Yeah. From what, um, I didn't dig super deep into the research on it, but from what I remember, it was just folded. And then I think it had a blanket stitch around the front of it. So um, huh, I've seen people guess that the ties that are on the side there, had mm -hmm. something to do with trying to keep it on. But honestly, unless it's very windy, I've never had one of these kind of blow off my head. And so I have a wool one that I've made. I did some blanket stitching across the front. I just did a nice little, I put a contrasting yarn across the bottom to finish yeah, this one. Nice. Um, they stay on my head pretty well. I mean, especially, or like sometimes I'll throw a cornet over the top or a band. Um, if it's really windy and I want to keep it on, but we wear the linen ones for sunshade and even with a little breeze, I don't have a lot of problem with it um, blowing off my head unless I'm like facing right into the wind. So um, I haven't seen anyone do any stiffening, but if it was a concern, you definitely could. Yeah. 
there any other questions? I don't want to cut it too short. That was pretty fast. I didn't think it was going to go that fast. <laughs> Yay, efficiency. Yay. Um, I have a question. Do you hem the bottom edge of it or do you just use the seam treatment to keep it like if you're using linen to keep it from fraying? Yeah, so I always serge bind, but I also, um, I'll show on this one. Yeah, so I, 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 I fold it like a hem and then I use that seam treatment to hold it down. If I wasn't going to do seam treatment, I would do a whip stitch so that there wasn't... Um, so that there wasn't surging on the bottom. So I would finish it just like any other, any other garment piece. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so that's what I did on this one. I don't know how well this is gonna hold up. I'm hoping that this will felt a little bit because I just, um, I don't even know what this would be called, but it's kind of like couching. Like I took, a, I took a piece of yarn and just laid it over the top and then I used um, thread to attach it to the very edge of the raw edge of the, um, the wool. And um, so far it's holding up pretty well. If it got snagged, I think it would rip out of the wool on the bottom, but I'm kind of hoping that the contrasting yarn kind of felt to the bottom and it kind of like seals up those edges. But that's an experiment. <laughs> I don't know in, in practicality how well it's going to work. So. I'll put my contact information back up here again. Um, I'm always happy to have people contact me if they have any questions or they're working through something. I love talking to people about art and projects. So please don't be shy or find me at an SEA event if you're local, um, if you're working on something and have questions or you want to um, just get my input on something. Thank you so much. That was a great class. You're welcome. Thank you. I tried to kind of write out some of the steps are a little, it was hard to describe which pieces go together. So hopefully between me showing and then um, having the description in the pictures, um, it's it's not too hard to put, put the gores in the right way if you're not super experienced with that. All right, Sarah. I'm not hearing any other questions. I will go ahead and end it. So, well, not end it, but I mean, stop the recording.